Hello everyone. This is my first post on here, so please bear with me. For context, my grandmother passed away in July 2016. I was 10 or 11 and in 5th grade at the time and was very close to her before she got sick. I had a phone by then, for safety reasons, and my mom always made sure I called her when I got home safely. There were three other people living at my grandparents' house, my two aunts and my cousin. At that time, my cousin had already graduated from high school, but she wasn't in college yet, and her mom was always working. My other aunt didn't work at that time either, so most of the week my aunt, cousin and grandpa were at home. Another important piece of information was that my mom always answered the phone and if she didn't, she would call back in less than 5 minutes. It wasn't the first day of school, I think they didn't have a bus for the first few days of school or something like that, I just remember that nobody went on the bus for the first week or so. Also, Amaya was a caring older sister to Holly and she treated me like her sister too, so it's very hard to believe that this was a prank. Now for the real story. I was in 5th grade, I must have been 10 or 11 years old, and my grandmother had died in July 2016. We started school in August, so it was only a month after she died. Before 5th grade I used to take the bus home, but the school made a new rule that only 2nd graders and below could take the bus. Grade 3 and above had to be picked up or walked home, we still don't know why they made that rule. The strange thing is that the school didn't warn any of the parents that this new rule would be enforced. So I got on the bus and the driver told me and my friends that we couldn't get on. So I rang my mom and told her, and she rang the school and explained that there had been no warning and no one could pick me up until later. So the school made an exception and let us on the bus for that day. I went home with my two friends and when we got off the bus we talked for a few minutes. One of my friends was called Holly and she had an older sister, Amaya, in middle school who I was also friends with. My friend Jay was also there but she was picked up as soon as we got off the bus so I stayed with Holly and Amaya. After a few minutes I went home, it was hot that day, I live in Southern California and it was August. My grandpa used to unlock the door for me a few minutes before the bus arrived so I could just walk in, but it wasn't unlocked that day. So I knocked and waited for about two minutes before I called him to open the door. I must have rung him four times. Now I've ruled out that he was asleep because there have been several times recently when I've called him while he was asleep and he's woken up to answer his phone. I remember that he always left the side gate unlocked, asterisk always asterisk, and that there was a key to the back door in the back garden. I tried to open it but it was no use, it was locked. I remember thinking how weird that was, but I didn't care, I remember feeling tired and hot. Then I rang my mom and she didn't answer, then I rang my sister and she didn't answer, then I rang my aunt, my other aunt, my uncle, my cousin and a friend of the family. None of them answered. I started to panic a little bit, but then I remembered that one of the windows at the front was broken and you could just slide it open. So I slid it open and tried to jump in, but unfortunately I wasn't very athletic or small at the time, so I couldn't lift myself up, even if I wanted to I don't think I could fit. So I went to my friend's house and asked Amaya and Holly to come over, I told them I couldn't get in and if they had a hairpin I could try to open it. I was young and saw people using bobby pins to open locks all the time in the movies so I thought I could do it, lol, then we all tried and unsurprisingly it didn't work. I then asked Amaya if she could climb through the window and open the door for me and she agreed. Me and Holly helped her up before she went in. It took about 30 seconds to a minute for her to unlock the door for me. She looked pale and somehow surprised. I remember asking her what was wrong and she said she had seen a lady in the corridor. I remember telling her it was probably my aunt, but she said no, it was an elderly lady. I don't know why but my first instinct was to ask her what the lady looked like and I started to describe my grandmother. Glasses, black curly hair, short and so on and she said yes. Then I asked her if she had seen her face and she said no. I couldn't believe what she was telling me and I just thanked her and went in. I remember being scared, but not of what had just happened, 
My thought was more that there was a ghost in the house, a child's mind is scared of everything, but as I walked through the hallway I felt strangely at peace. Which was so rare because I've always hated the hallway, even to this day when I'm at my grandparents I always have to turn the light on. If anyone has any ideas about what could have happened that wasn't paranormal I would love to hear about it, thanks for reading. Also, if there are any questions about this, please ask and I'll try to answer them. Well, I'm, F, 26 now, but I think about that moment at least once a week, it happened when I was 10. This is a bit long so sorry in advance. I'd like to preface this by saying that I grew up in a mobile home in the country, Ohio, USA, and my closest neighbors were down the road and were my stepfamily. I lived with my mom and stepdad and only saw my biological dad every second or third weekend and it was a 30 minute drive to where the drop off slash pickup point was. Anyway, I was 10 and it was the summer holidays. Our house had just had lunch. My stepdad was at work, my mom was annoyed with my brother and me for fighting over the TV, I wanted to watch cartoons and he wanted to watch a film, and sent us to clean our rooms instead of arguing about what to watch. Mind you, my brother's room was at one end of the caravan and my room was right next to it, while our mom and stepdad's room was at the other end of the caravan. And you'd always know whose foot was whose when someone walked through the house. I had a big toy chest that my stepfather made for me that took up half of the small wall, with the door to the hallway, in my room at the time and it sat in the corner. The edge of the chest was maybe four feet from my bedroom door. And I'm sitting on the floor, maybe a couple of feet away from both the chest and the door. I had been distracted while cleaning after finding a Barbie that I thought I had left at my bio dad's house, but was just in my own mess, and started playing with it. I'd say about 15 minutes of playing with fashionista Barbie had gone by before I saw movement at my door out of the corner of my eye. I'm not kidding, I jumped. My first thought, before I really saw who was standing there, was that my brother was messing with me because I didn't hear my mom's footfall. She never hit her, involuntary, stomping. And he must have been angry that we had to clean our rooms after a fight. I never heard anything, although I did see a body slide into view in my periphery. But when I looked, it wasn't my brother, and I stopped breathing, I subconsciously knew that from the start, because my brother would have started yelling at me before he even left his room, if I'm being honest with myself. It was a man standing just outside my bedroom door who looked like he was dressed straight out of the late 80s slash early 90s but who also looked, in the face, exactly like my biological father if he had a mullet and a mustache. Logically, I knew it wasn't my real dad as he lived an hour away and it wasn't his weekend. My biological father also shaved his head religiously. But that's not even the scary part. The scary part is the fact that this man, who looked almost identical to my real father, was holding his decapitated head in his right hand as if it were a lantern to illuminate the room, pointing it directly at me in broad daylight. There was a cruel smile on his face, even though the head wasn't attached. I stared at him for maybe 10 seconds, my mouth agape in shock, unable to scream or gasp or even move the Barbie doll that was still in my hand. I finally squeezed my eyes shut as hard as I could and whispered to myself that he wasn't there, and when I opened my eyes he was gone. My mom came to check on us about 10 minutes after this happened and I was still staring at where he was, waiting for him to come back. She asked me if I was alright because I was completely blank, but I just shrugged it off. I never saw the man again and never mentioned it to anyone until I wrote this post. Hands down one of the scariest things I've ever experienced and like I said, I literally think about this moment at least once a week. So do you think this was a ghost encounter from my childhood? <laughs>